Welcome to a new tutorial where we will learn how to model and texture as well as render photorealistic interior blinds. So these are actually straight out of the V-Ray renderer here in 3ds Max um, and these will be the end results for today's tutorial. Um, it should only take about an hour long. We're going to be creating three textures, setting up the lighting, the rendering, as well as doing all the modeling for this blind uh, to ensure that it's accurate to scale, photorealistic, and looks as good as possible in any interior scene. Uh, this is basically a drag and drop prop to where all you basically do is just select it, put it in a wall, and you're good to go. Um, no adjustments will be needed. You can change any of the textures that we'll create today. Um, and the render settings will give you a general idea of how to go about your render. Um, if you want to pick up this scene file, feel free to check out my Gumroad account, uh, gumroad.com slash eternalblade to pick it up. Um, if not, feel free to follow along and create your own. So with that, here we go. So let's begin our scene by setting up our 3ds Max. So the first thing we want to do is go to Customize, then go to Unit Setup, and ensure that we're in metric with centimeters. Go to System Unit Setup and ensure that we're in centimeters here as well. This will just make it a bit easier when we're actually trying to model. Now I actually have two reference images that I'm using. The first is uh, this of a you know, full-on blinds, just showing it's a plantation blind. And um, second is kind of a full length shot, so you can see also that it's got a bottom and a top. Okay, so let's first start off by making the blind itself. So it's pretty simple. We're going to make a box, right, like here. And the width is going to be 85 centimeters. The length will be 5 centimeters. And the height will be 0.25 centimeters. Okay. That gives us a pretty small box. Um, and then what we want to do is simply uh, convert our box to an editable poly. I use the Control alt q as my hotkey I set up. Go into the edge mode, Control a to select everything, chamfer. And we're going to give this a very small chamfer, something like, uh, well, let me zoom in here and see, maybe 0.05, that should do perfect, and maybe even 0 0.025, okay? Now what we can do is we know that our blinds are going to have three main segments, so let's select all the edges here, and let's connect this three times, okay? This will give us three equal segments. Now control click on the vertices here, press R, and just scale them out a bit because they're actually not um, perfectly equal in the space of the blind. Now with your edges, let's chamfer these edges just so we can get a distance uh, between the edge. Okay, so I think about 0.25, sorry, 0.25 um, should about do the trick for what we want. Okay. Next, uh, click on the center piece here and press ring. Connect. Now we're going to want two connections. All right, so change that to two. And we can increase the pinch a bit to about 40, 40. Should be perfect. So now, pressing F3 to turn on our edge mode, you can see we're left with these three individual gaps right here. So what we want to do for this is click one side, click the other, and press bridge. This will create a perfect hole in our mesh. All right, so do the same here, bridge, and do the same for this side, bridge. All right, perfect. Now we want to shore up these holes, so I'll click this and ring it. And you'll see we have this edge. So we're going to connect this edge with two connections, and we're going to increase the pinch quite a bit to about 97, maybe even 98, and check the box. Come to the other side and press connect to repeat the same procedure. Now go in here in the middle, do the same thing, and you can increase this to maybe 99. Okay? And go over here and repeat the same procedure. Perfect. So now this kind of finishes off our blind here. So if we go to a turbo smooth and add a turbo smooth modifier, 
let's see we have this nice looking uh, shape here. And we can actually maybe apply one more just to smooth it out. All right. So, and I, in fact, I think I want to do a little bit more editing here. So going back into our blind, let me actually make this a gray color so I can see what I'm doing and not get blinded. There we go. So let's select uh, this edge, ring, connect, one segment, and slide it down, oops, sorry, slide it down to where it's sort of near the edge there, okay? And do the same for the other side. Perfect. Now when you turn on Turbo Smooth, you'll see you have a bit, your mesh is a bit um, more refined. All right, so now what we can do is angle this. Uh, well, we won't even do that. Yeah, I guess we will. Okay, so let's angle this about oh, 45 degrees or so. Press W, and in the front viewport here, you want to shift drag this until you have just a little bit of an overlap. And in our number of copies, we're going to put about 30 30, 31. That will give us 32 blinds total. Okay, so there we go. Now we've kind of got our big wall of blinds going up. Now next what we want to do is simply, and again, I have the reference image off to the side, and I'm kind of modeling after that. So the next thing we want to do is make a cylinder. We'll kind of make it right in the middle of one of these holes. Okay, so very thin. And let's give it a height segment of just one. And it probably only needs about eight sides. So convert that to an editable poly using Control Alt Q or your modifier stack. Press one on the keyboard. And let's just drag that to where it's sort of coming out the bottom. And we will drag it all the way up to where it comes out the top. Right, just like that. Now you can see we have sort of a line uh, going through. All right. Now what we need to do is drag that line back and drag another one forward. Because the way blinds work is they actually have little bits that go in between. So next what we can do is sh shift drag this into the middle. And by pushing one on your keyboard, let's drag this down. Okay. So we've kind of got a little piece like this. Now what we can do here is rotate this piece just so it comes to about here. So something right about like this. All right, and make sure that the ends are both within the other cylinders. All right, so zooming in on this, if we press R on the keyboard, go to our local view, you want to scale this down pretty considerably because these are actually smaller um, pieces of geometry here. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out here. And in fact, we're going to scale uh, these down a bit as well. So just scale them both down a bit. All right, perfect. So next, what we need to do is back into our perspective here on the bottom. Click this, and let's shift drag it right up to the next one here. All right, and let's give this 30 copies. So if we're lucky, these will be strategically placed to where they all match. But you can't always get perfectly lucky, so we're just going to go here and manually adjust them all. Once you click the bottom arrow once on the Move tool, you can just immediately click on a poly or an element, and it will automatically drag it in the same direction. So we can just go in here quickly and edit this. All right, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, nothing in life is perfect. And by doing this manually, you're gonna create a bit of variation in the model itself, which is gonna actually help with the realism. That way it won't look you know, exactly the way everyone um, you know, portrays it in their head, but it'll be a more realistic, a more rugged version. Um, and it'll just help you know, boost the realism in pretty much any scene. So you can't exactly go wrong with that. All right, there we go. So if we look on the perspective view, you can see we have our lines kind of going all the way through, which is exactly what we want. So next, let's select all those lines. And we're just going to 
uh, group them together. Okay, and we're going to call this string. I'm sure it has some fancy name, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Now with this, we can shift drag over to our next slot. Okay, and just make sure it's centered up. And we can shift drag again over to our third slot. Just like this. Excellent. So now we've got the main portion of the blinds done. Nothing too fancy, but it works. So now what we need to do is do some crown molding, which is basically the stuff up here on the top. So the easiest way I've found to do this is simply copy an image. So what we're going to do is go into our front viewport here, and we're going to make a plane. Okay, so let's make a box just like this. Actually, sorry, a plane. And we're going to give the dimensions of 863 by 749. Now, these dimensions represent the dimensions of the reference image I have. Okay, so now we're going to go into our texture view by pressing M on the keyboard. Uh, just drag out a VRA material. In the diffuse map, we're going to go standard bitmap. And we're going to navigate to our project files. So once we're in there, let's go to our references here. And let's just choose this one. Okay. Double click on the bitmap and hit this button, show shaded material in viewport. And now what we can do is simply drag and drop this material onto our plane. And we'll have a perfect representation of our image. And it'll be the exact appropriate size as well. So now what we can do is go into our splines here under shapes. We're just going to follow this edge right here. Okay, so it's nothing terribly difficult. Just sort of follow the edge. And we're going to do a bit of refining afterwards. So uh, don't worry if yours is a bit, you know, fuzzy or messed up. You know, we're just trying to get the initial shape out of the way. All right, perfect. That should do nicely. And then just bring it up. Well, kind of bring it over a little bit. You can hold shift to make it perfectly straight and double click on the end and close the spline. Now what we need to do is go here and add an edit spline modifier on here. And we're actually going to move this spline off to the left just so we can see it a bit better. We know what we want to get, so it's going to be pretty easy I think from here on out. So right click on this spline and make it a bezier corner. And we're just going to sort of try to work with these until we get a shape that we're happy with. So nice rounded um, areas and whatnot. And maybe make this one, oops, make this one a bezier. All right. Maybe we'll bring this one out a bit. In fact, maybe make this one a bezier corner. That way we can kind of have a double hump. And an important thing here is just save your scene. You always want to make sure that you're saving your scene. Um, it, it really helps, even though autosave is enabled. So we're just going to call this blinds01. And it's good to save your scene and kind of, um, you know, names you actually remember. Uh, and also, you know, 01, 02, 03, that way, um, if something does happen, you're kind of set and you can recover to an older file if necessary. All right, so we're just going to bring this out. Okay, something like that. Looks pretty good. And over here, let's see what have we got. Some big areas. So let's make that a bezier. All right, that looks like it's already one. And as is this one. So we're just trying to even out all these curves. It's not a bezier corner, a bezier. All right, excellent, excellent. Looks good. And that should about do it. So now that we have this, we can press Alt W to get out of that. And we can go in here and using the extrude modifier, we can actually extrude out a perfect piece of crown molding just like that. So it's extremely easy. All right, so we can now delete um, this reference plane. Actually, we'll leave it there for a little bit. We will need it a bit later on. So now getting this, let's press E, A for angle snap, and we'll rotate this 90 degrees. And we're gonna place it a little bit in front of our mesh. Okay, come up here, and we're just gonna place it right at about here. 
So it does overhang just a tad. And now we're going to make an edit poly here. Go into our vertex sub-object mode here in the front. And let's line these up to where they're perfectly lined or perfectly lined up on both ends. And what we need to do now is select everything, press R, and we're going to scale it out just to where it's about, you know, three centimeters or so bigger than the actual mesh. Okay. Now with our edit poly modifier, let's click the back polygon here. We're going to go to hinge from edge, pick the hinge as right here. We're going to give it a 90 degree angle. Okay. So you'll see we're coming around just like that. And the segments, you can make whatever you want. If you want a rounded corner, if you want a harsh corner, you can only do one. So it really depends uh, what you're feeling. Uh, I think for now, I'm going to do one. Okay, and then extrude. And we can extrude this back about, I don't know, we'll say maybe eh, four centimeters for now. Perfect. There we go. So now I've kind of got a nice chamfered corner piece on there. And we can do the same on this side. We could have also used a symmetry modifier if we chose. Um, but again, it doesn't really much matter. So there we go. And extrude. And all your settings uh, should basically remain the same. So you shouldn't have to do too much work. Excellent. So that should do good for that. All right. Uh, now what we need to do is this same molding is going to go on the bottom. Except it'll be sort of in the reversed direction. So press W on the keyboard here. And let's shift drag uh, this down a little bit. And actually, I think looking at this, that it's probably a bit too big for our scene. You see how big their blinds are versus how big ours are. So we're just going to go in here. And on this axis, we're just going to shrink it all down just a little bit, just to give us a more compact feel. Excellent. All right. So now press W on the keyboard and shift drag this down. All right, now this one, we can go ahead and delete uh, the little curves we made. We probably should have done this earlier, but just go ahead and delete that, okay? And go ahead and delete the other side as well. Now what you do next is click the border mode and press cap. All right, and the reason we're doing this is just to um, sort of make it look a bit better on the bottom. Now what we're going to do is an FFD, 4x4, four four, actually a 2x2 two two should work. Press 1 to go into the control points, select the bottom points, press R, and we're going to scale them in a bit. This will give us a bit of an angle on our piece, just to give it a bit more visual interest. Okay? Now, let's see, that looks good for that. Um, actually, I did say we wanted to flip this, but I don't really think it much matters. We'll press W, and in the left viewport, we'll just drag this down to about the bottom of the blinds. Okay, it should be right around, right around here. Now what we need to do is go to our box mode here, and let's just make a box sort of the exact width of this area here. Now we can just put that box directly on top of this molding. This is basically you know, the, the window sill. And actually, it's going to have to go all the way to the back. So kind of do about here, you know, whatever the length of your window is going to be. All right, so right about there looks pretty good to me. And it's going to come out about, oh, I don't know, maybe four centimeters. So let's convert this to an editor poly. Press 1, and we're just going to increase the length of that just a bit, kind of do around here. All right, and then this is going to sink back right to around here. All right, so this is kind of what we're getting. Now select that box we just made, press 2 on the keyboard, Control A, chamfer, and you're going to give these edges a chamfer of about 0.25, should do good. All right, and give it a small turbo smooth as well. One iteration should be fine. Press G to get rid of the grid. All right, so that doesn't look so bad. Uh, this does need to be scaled out a bit, so just scale it up just a tad. 
kind of go around there. All right, that looks excellent. Um, so now what we need to do is let's just create a little wall for our uh, window thing to go in. And actually, well, we can continue on doing other things first. So let's go back here, press G to get rid of the grid. And let's just go ahead and make this shape right here. So we're going to use a cylinder and just drag out the approximate shape of it. Press E and rotate 90 degrees. All right, there we go. And then convert it, actually give it about uh, eight, 18 sides should be fine. Convert it to an editable poly. I again use my hotkey and drag it up as well as drag it up sort of here-ish. Right now what we're going to do is just going to scale this so it sort of matches uh, the reference image. And then using the bevel tool we're going to come in here and just try to bevel it to where we get a similar shape. It doesn't have to be perfect but we do want something sort of close. Okay, and then down here we'll bevel again and then we'll bevel inward because these things actually are sort of hollow. We can scale that a bit. All right, let's extrude and we'll just bring that right back up. Pressing F3, you see I'm doing this. We'll give it a very small inset, uh, you know, 0.25 should be good. And maybe even 0 0.025. No, point one. Excellent. And then we're going to give it an inset on the top as well. So now if we apply a turbo smooth to this, you'll see we have a very nice shape um, for our little handle thing. All right, now we're going to have um, four handles on each of these blinds. So let's just drag these over. And now I believe we are done with this image. Okay, so we can delete that. Control A, and I'm just going to assign everything a gray material. And it's about now that you should save your scene as O2 if you're following along. All right, so let's grab this and just sort of drag it to about, you know, kind of halfway here. And maybe for our scene, we're going to scale it down just a little bit. Uh, that looks about good. It should be about you know, the length of one of these blinds. Let's go in here, group, ungroup, and we're just going to take one of these um, pieces that we've made and drag it out using shift drag. All right, now go back in and let's regroup those together just so we don't um, lose everything. All right, so group and that's fine. Now using uh, this piece that we have here, let's go ahead and hide the majority of our blinds here just for a moment okay and we can hide that that as well all right so we're going to take this and just move it right to the middle press one and drag this line up okay and if you look in the side view here let's move our entire line here just so we understand what's happening Press one, and let's drag it up just to where it's sort of underneath here somewhere. All right, and then you just want to center it inside of your piece. Perfect, just like that. All right, so that'll give you sort of this little hanging, uh, hanging string here. Now let's go ahead and unhide all, and Let's select that. And what we're going to do here is actually use this as the remainder of our strings. So we're going to shift drag this whole thing over just a little bit. OK. And maybe make this one a bit higher up. Select its associated line. Press 1 on the keyboard. And just drag it up as well. OK. So you see now we have sort of two lines right there. Uh, next, what we want to do is grab all four of those and just go ahead and drag them to the other side in approximately the same position. Except this is the one that actually controls the you know rotation of your blind. So one of these is going to be much higher. So let's bring the you know left one sort of up here. 
and the right one will be sort of, you know, down here-ish, okay? And let's change these to where they match. So just put them in there and right in there, perfect. Grab this one, one, and drag it up using the move tool. Perfect, there we go. So you see now that we have those um, blinds are pretty much perfect there. All right, now one of the last things we wanna do here is just create the little top box where everything goes in. So we're just gonna go in here using the auto grid option. And you know these boxes vary pretty drastically. So we're just gonna create a generic one if we can. So just make your, your box and it, it needs to so to be the entire width of uh, this element here. So something like that, all right? And no one's really gonna see it, so you don't have to worry particularly much about the top or anything like that. Um, and let's just drag it up just a bit and press R and maybe scale it down just a tad. They're not particularly large. All right, something just like that. All right, perfect. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and select everything here and deselect um, sort of the middle stuff. And let's just grab this piece and hide unselected. So you see now we just pretty much have our strings. <clears throat> so we'll know where the um, other elements have to go. Let's convert this to an editable poly <clears throat> and we'll just drag this out just a little bit okay and now what we need to do is just make a few connections here so we're going to go here connect and we'll connect it <clears throat> um, six times to start off with so in our front viewport here let's go to our vertex mode here and we're just going to edit these to where we get sort of little boxes around all of our stuff so there's one all right, there's two. Um, let's do this one. There is three. Come back in here, give it four more connections. All right, and here is four. And do the last one as well. All right, excellent. So now what we can do that we have that is click this um, edge right here, press ring, connect, and let's give it two connections, okay? And let's increase the connection, the pinch, just to where it goes out a little bit, okay? We're not going to get it perfect, um, but we'll be pretty close. So now let's go in here and individually edit these. So we're just going to move that to there and this one sort of up here something like that and then let's grab this one and move it back a little bit all right grab this one and this one we can do these at the same time move them back okay and then let's grab uh, this one move it forward and move it forward so what these are going to allow us to do is if we select all of these polygons that we just um, edited, we press extrude, we can extrude these back into themselves just like that. It will basically give it a little area to where you'll think that these blinds actually go in somewhere. Okay. Now let's just select all the edges here and chamfer them. Now this isn't the cleanest way to do this but I believe for our purpose it will work. All right, um, now let's go here and apply a Turbo Smooth Modifier. All right, so there we go. Now we have a nice smooth mesh with these kind of little you know, cutouts here for our remainder of our mesh. So let's unhide all. And that pretty much does it for the modeling of the blind. Now if you wanna know how this sits in an actual house, uh, we can just model a a plane here real quick, kind of like this. Um, make sure it's gray. Let's give it, um, that, that should be an appropriate number of segments. So four and four. 
And now, go into your vertex sub-object mode here. Let's just bring this somewhere right here in the middle. All right, this one is going to go sort of, let's see, that doesn't really matter where that one goes. This one goes sort of here. Kind of right in the middle, it'll cut through. And then grab this, and it'll go, let's see, right to about the edge of the blind, sort of here. Okay, and then this one will do the same thing. So kind of right to the edge of your blinds. All right, excellent. Uh, now what we need to do is simply delete um, these polygons here. All right, now grab all of the edges here. Just um, You can't really see because this is in the way, but I'm just grabbing all of the edges on the outside. And then holding the shift key, you just want to drag back just a little bit. So something like this. Okay, now I've noticed that our top edge isn't quite tall enough, so we're just going to drag it to where it's above uh, this area here and ensure that both sides are um, kind of out just a little bit from there. Okay, and do the same on the other side. Just make sure that they're perfect. Excellent. And there we go. Now we've got a, kind of got how it would actually look in a real house. So you can see we have everything and the tops are open like this so that is um, correct. Alright so let's just make sure that we're far enough back here. There we go. And alright that'll do it for the modeling portion. So now let's move on to the texturing portion. So the first thing we want to do is prepare our scene for rendering. So let's go to the render setup here and when it pops up we want to make sure we have V-Ray enabled and then make sure we go to output size and go to HDTV and we'll do 480 by 270 for now. Um, we want to go into our V-Ray tab, make sure the V-Ray frame buffer is enabled here. Change your image sampler to adaptive subdivision. All right. Um, for the GI, enable it, put it at irradiance map and light cache. And for now, let's leave both these at low and 200. This will give us some relatively quick renders. Okay, and we can leave the rest of the stuff the same. Let's close that out. Now, um, let's expand our scene a bit here just so we can more easily work with it. So what we wanna do is just grab sorta of all these outside edges and press W and we're just gonna shift drag these out pretty far away, kind of like that. Okay, and then what we're going to want to do is go into our polygon mode. Actually, we'll just undo that. We're going to grab all of the edges on the outside here. Okay, shift drag out like that, and then go into your border here, and we can cap it. Okay, now on this, right click go to Object Properties, General, and press Backface Call. This will allow you to see through it so we can see what we're doing. So press 1, and let's just drag this side way out over here just to give us some space. All right, and maybe bring this back over here. Excellent. All right, um, so now what we want to do is let's create a few materials here. So press M to open the Material Editor up, and we're going to create three materials. So let's drag three V-Ray materials out. Okay, the first one is going to be for the wall. Let's call this wall. All right, and it's going to be sort of a light eggshell color. So let's just give it a very sort of light off-white color. All right, and we're going to give it a slight reflection, maybe somewhere. In the you know, 30-ish range. That should do. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and maybe even a bit lower. You know, they don't reflect too much. And for the glossiness, we'll put it at about 0.6. All right, that should do it for the wall material. Uh, next, let's go on to the sort of paint that's going to be covering the blinds and the um, 
wood pieces. So we're going to bring that up kind of high, maybe to about 230. Uh, the reflect is going to be sort of a modest gray, somewhere right around here, maybe 47. And the reflection here will be 0.7. Okay. And the final material will be for our string. So let's type in string. Oops, sorry, make sure you're on the right material here. String. And this one will be, we'll call this uh, white paint. All right, and our string material will be composed of sort of another uh, white color. Uh, the reflection will be pretty low, maybe at around 12. And the glossiness will be set extremely high at 0.6. Okay? So these are about the only three materials we'll need in our scene. Uh, but in addition, uh, for the wall material, let me just, we can delete that material there. Actually, we'll, we'll leave it there just in case. Um, in the bump map, let's go and drag standard, and we will create a noise map. Okay? And you can see the noise is pretty big. So we're going to bring that right down to about 0.25, okay, and change it to fractal. This will just give us just very subtle bumps. You can't even really see them in here, but uh, in the noise map itself, I guarantee you they're there. All right, perfect. So now let's go ahead and assign these materials to our scene. So uh, the wall material, you obviously assign it to the wall, okay. Let's come in here and grab everything and then deselect sort of you know, the middle area here, as well as these three, these four um, knobs. And we can assign this the string material. So double click and assign to selection. All right, now let's grab everything else that we have left, uh, including the four knobs. And we'll give that the white paint material. All right, perfect. So that'll about do it for our material selection here. Now, uh, Let's get rid of the grids. We don't really need those. Let's also add a V-Ray Sun here. So go to V-Ray, V-Ray Sun, and we're just going to drag this kind of high, something like that. All right, and we'll add the environment map. Maybe we'll drag this over a little bit to the right. Something like that should do perfect. Okay. Uh, let's also go to the camera standard and add a physical camera in here. And we'll just try to you know, put the target right there. Maybe go into your camera here and just drag it up a little bit. Perhaps zoom it in just so we can get a pretty good view here. And maybe we'll make it a bit higher just so like we're coming down on it. Something like that should do perfect. Okay. Now let's add a few V-Ray lights in here. I don't really know if we need them, but we'll, we'll give it a go. So let's do a V-Ray light. And from the top view, let's just drag a light like that. Let's change it to disk, okay? And make sure that it's sort of up at the top here. This is just to give us the render that we want. Perfect. And then we can change um, the intensity to luminous power. And we'll bring it at about 1200. So a pretty powerful um, light. And the color, we'll go to temperature and change it to about 6000. So, so this is like your regular daylight or a reading light or something like that. And let's go here and we'll instance this and we'll make two more. Okay, and we'll come over here, drag them over, and we'll just do two copies. So we have kind of three rows of lights. All right, perfect. Uh, now what we want to do is, let's see here, go to your customize or rendering environment and there'll be a tab here, Exposure Control. We want to change this to V-Ray Exposure Control. Right? And the reason we'll do that, let's just actually go back to Physical Camera. And I'm going to open up our render settings here real quick. And uh, we're going to render this out. And we're going to see what we get. I'm betting it's going to be really white or something. All right, so there we go. So you see it's all white. And the reason is because our exposure control is not quite right. So to fix this, just change it to V-Ray exposure control. And although this goes really, really white, um, if we change our shutter speed here to a very low number, uh, say about 40, uh, and then we re-render, 
we'll see that we actually start to get a much better image here. You know, it actually you know, looks like daylight and what you would imagine um, a realistic render to look like. So we'll let that go for a second, and it's a very low resolution, so you can't see too much. Um, so that should be pretty good. And F number and ISO, you can leave those the same, but you do want to change this white balance here to neutral. And what that'll do is it'll just allow you to balance uh, the colors of your image a little bit better. It'll give it a bit more of a daylight sort of bluish feel as opposed to the more uh, cream color fill that we had earlier. All right, so that should be about perfect. Um, one other thing we can do here is maybe grab these and come down to where it says well, do we want to do this? I'm thinking about putting these as directional lights. So if you change these to directional, you'll see you can kind of make cones of light like that. And we'll see if it drastically changes anything. I really don't think it will. It might make it a bit warmer that we changed everything like that, which is acceptable. All right, so let's um, blow this image up here. So go to your V-Ray tab. Just go to 1920 by 1080. And um, we're going to come in here and just go to shaded so we can see what we're doing. And let me just move my camera in just a bit. Maybe something like this. And you can press Shift F to show your save frames. And maybe a bit more. Kind of have a cool angle. Maybe something like this. Okay. And let's give that a render and see what it gives, gives us. All right, so having uh, basically rendered this out, you can see we get a really realistic sort of daylight image, you know, in the height of the day. Um, you know, if we want to change this a little bit, we can go to our uh, exposure control here and maybe, maybe bring this up to, oh, I don't know, 65. And let's just re-render a small portion of this and just see, you know, how that changes the color. It should make it just a little bit darker, which is, I think, about what we want, just a bit darker image. All right, and then we can come, um, to our V-Ray tab here. And let's go down here in the V-Ray section to where it says color mapping. Let's change this to exponential and re-render. It should get rid of some of the highlights and make it more of a neutral tone all around, which uh, is a pretty good idea. I'm gonna try linear multiply two here and also see uh, how that looks. Cause you gotta play around with these. Sometimes some are a little bit better than others. All right, so linear multiply actually seems like a pretty good combination. So we're gonna uh, go with that real quick and we're gonna re-render this image here. All right, well, there we have it. Uh, you guys now have a perfectly realistic rendered and textured um, blinds here. And you can easily just drag and drop this as a unit into another scene. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please make sure you follow my Facebook page. It's just facebook.com slash eternal blade. Um, also, if you want to check out and purchase this scene file as well as the tutorials and just help support me, I have a Gumroad um, account. It'll be in the description. It's just gumroad.com slash eternalblade. Uh, you can pick this up for just a couple bucks and, you know, give me a little support. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. Happy modeling, and I will see you guys next time.